So guys, yesterday was September the 17th and on that day the new Intel i7 7700K was made available for the first time for pre-order online. So I thought this a good time to review the information and benchmarks we have on these new Cabulate CPUs. Cracky. Yep, so it's true, as of yesterday, the 17th of September, the i7 7700K was available to pre-order online. Well, don't go rushing out to try and pre-order it unless you're living in the European country of Estonia, because it's only available on the website founder at www.found.ee. Now, I've probably totally mispronounced that, so you have to forgive me for that. We can get an idea of costings from this website. It's listed here at 360 euros, which comes out to about 310 UK pounds or 400 US dollars. But I don't really think it's gonna be 310 pounds here in the UK when released. I was pretty hopeful when Nvidia released the Pascal GPUs that the prices quoted in US dollars would be the same here. Well, they kind of were, but not really in the way I'd hoped. They're the same number of pounds as they were dollars. So, as we always pay a little bit more over here in the UK, I think us in the UK can expect to pay a price of around £400. So, what benefits and improvements does Cabulate bring? Well, these processors are an optimization of the Skylake architecture. So they're still on the 14 nanometer process and what Intel are calling the 14 nanometer plus. So this allows Cabulate faster CPU clock speeds, faster CPU speed changes, and higher turbo frequencies. So, other than these higher clock speeds and quicker speed changes, there aren't really any sort of major new features. But it does bring us native USB 3.1 support. But until the new 200 series chipset comes out, we're still going to rely on the third-party add-on chip in order to give us 3.1 ports. Intel say there's a 12% increase in productivity-based tasks. Over the last few generations of Intel CPUs, we're pretty used to seeing this kind of 5-10% to increase in CPU speeds. But where Intel are really hammering home the point of what's changed is 4K video creation. And what they're saying is it's now 15 times faster than before. And yeah, while this is kind of true, they are basing it against hardware that's from 2011. So now this hardware is already five years old. Now, I wouldn't call someone that edits and creates 4K video a mainstream user. But according to recent reports, the average age of a computer from a mainstream user is five years old. So the people doing the 4K editing and creating are probably going to be on hardware a lot newer than five years old. So I would really put them as enthusiast users rather than mainstream users. And so if these users were to upgrade to a Cabulake CPU, they're not going to be seeing the 15% that Intel quotes. But that said, Cabby Lake features a new graphics architecture, which improves 3D performance and 4K video playback. It adds to the mix native hardware decoding and encoding of these video formats, H.264, HEVC and VP9. Now these video formats are used a lot in 4K streaming. For example, the VP9 is an open and royalty-free video coding format developed by Google. And as such, it's widely used by YouTube for streaming their 4K videos. And it's reported up till now that they've streamed over 25 billion hours of HD video. And this format is great because it allows for the streaming without any buffering at all. So, what does having this encoding and decoding in hardware mean for us? Well, basically what it means is the CPU isn't going to have to be doing so much heavy lifting um, decoding these streams. So, watching 4K video on a Cabulate laptop, it's reported that the battery can last up to 75% longer than on a normal laptop. So, that's pretty good power saving. 
So that's good for laptop users, but what about desktop users I hear you say? I thought this video was going to mention the 7700K. Well, what do we know about the 7700K then? Well, to start with, the 7700K is Intel's fastest clocked i7 CPU to date. It has a base clock speed of 4.2, now that's faster than the turbo speed of my CPU and its boost clock is actually 4.5 GHz. It has 4 cores, 8 threads and 95 Watt TDP. And as it's a K CPU, obviously it's on unlocked. So we can expect some pretty high overclock speeds from this CPU when it comes out. Well, do we know how well this chip performs now? Well, supposedly we actually do, but so long as the information is real. We've recently had a few leaked benchmarks for the Cabulate CPUs, the first of which is the i7-7700K, which is a SciSoft Sandra benchmark. So here you can see the 7700K is getting a score of 151 GOPS. Now, how does that compare to what, say, a 6700K is getting? Well, if you look at this chart, you'll see the 6700K is getting 140.8 GOPS. And if you look at the 6700K, which is overclocked to 4.6, we're getting just a little bit more than the 7700K, we're getting 155.62. So, a pretty impressive score for a non-overclock CPU. And there have also been some leaked Geekbench scores as well. Um, this time we'll look at the i5-7600K. You can see here that we're getting a single core benchmark of 4,190 and a multi-core benchmark of 13,147. Now if we compare that to a Geekbench against a 6600K, you can see that we get a single core benchmark of 3,312 and a multi-core benchmark of 10,646. Now this is a pretty good increase but the increase is mainly down to a higher clock speed on the 7600K being 3.8 GHz compared to the 6600K of 3.5 GHz. And what we can see that's common across all of these benchmarks is they're all on an Asus Z170K motherboard. Now this motherboard is based on the 100 series chipset. So what we know from this is basically that at least the engineering samples of the Cabby Lake chips are already compatible with existing motherboards. But whether it will stay that way on release we've yet to see. It is possible that Intel may limit it to the new 200 series chipset motherboards. But in my opinion we'll probably see it on the 100 and 200 series. So that's what we know so far and we're going to have to wait until the first quarter of 2017 to get our hands on one um, around the same time as AMD are releasing their new Zen processor. So at the beginning of next year it'll be interesting to see how they stack up against each other. Well if you happen to enjoy that video I'd really appreciate you giving it a like and if you want to see more videos from me then why not subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, I hope it's a good one.